Alrighty folks, welcome back to the channel. It has been a hot minute. Uh, things have been busy and um, yeah, just uh, just getting back into it now. So I wanted to talk about a, a book today that uh, really helped me um, with anxiety, uh, depression, and a lot of this stuff when I was really struggling with it. So this is not strictly carnivore related, but this is, uh, this is like a massive shift in the sort of uh, way of thinking from going from like the sort of paradigm of I'm broken, there's something wrong with me, I'm stuck to, oh my gosh, like I understand what's going on here and I can actually get better and I see what's going on. This is not like a cut and dry thing. So I'm getting into the nitty gritty of how that can heal uh, mental health issues. Can't seem to get anything done. Overdid it on the caffeine. Strength's never weak, this week's never strength. Catch you guys later. Like, I actually feel better. Like I really, my body like feels better. I feel a little bit more alive. So as big of a part as the carnivore diet was actually feeling better, um, this this book gave me the insight and kind of the perspective to be like, whoa, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not kind of a, I, I'm not a broken person here. Like I was really in a in a very difficult spot, um, just kind of panicking every day and um, and didn't know what to do about it. And I just see, I mean, a lot of these kind of anxiety support groups on Facebook just. Uh, um, it was kind of not that I needed them. I kind of joined them actually when I was I was trying to just give some support to people and I was looking at putting together some resources for this. But anyways, that's another story. But I, the point being, a lot of people are still going through this stuff and I see them, they don't understand their symptoms. So they're trying to like, they're trying to like figure out um, each little thing. They're asking if anyone else has this little feeling or that little feeling or is this, does something bother someone this way? And that's the insidious thing about kind of anxiety is that a lot of people end up stuck in these ways. But There'll probably be a bit of wind in the background here. Hopefully it's not too bad um, because it's just so nice outside. So I figured I would do this outside. But let's cut right to the book. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple of these because there was a couple books that were just massive shift. So this is the book. It's called Self-Help for Your Nerves and it's by Dr. Claire Weeks. Um, maybe this will be the thumbnail if I can get this up there. But this uh, book, I can't recommend it enough. And it's just a, um, it's, it's a it's just a great companion to... Um, getting insight into mental health. So I don't really believe anymore that people are, uh, that there's mentally ill people. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. I don't believe that there's mental conditions that people are are stuck with. For the most part, I think everyone can heal. Um, a lot of that's through diet, but a lot of it's through um, even just understanding what's going on and then being able to kind of pull the right levers to to change that. So I've got some electrolytes here. So this is back before I kind of knew anything about um, really self-development diet or anything like that. But um, this book kind of opened my eyes to a kind of a path to recovery. So if you're someone who's maybe um, or know someone who's really just stuck, uh, they don't know what's going on. Um, this is where, so saying this is where a lot of people start to look for like medications. They just want to get out of it's so bad what they're in and it's understandable. And, and maybe in the short term, I kind of start to think that medications aren't um, aren't ever a good option but that's another conversation let's get into this book so this is called hope and help for your nerves or this one's called self-help for your nerves some publications are called hope and help for your nerves so sometimes it's the same book it says learn to relax and enjoy life again by overcoming stress and fear so that sounds all great and there's a lot of books out there like this but i just want to say i've read a lot of them and this is kind of like the gold standard right here so um you're just going to eat this book up if you're someone who obsesses someone who has anxiety or someone who's really struggling because it it's um it's really something so i just want to read the opening paragraph we'll start with that and then um and then kind of go from there um so i think this quote it starts with this little um yeah it is a quote is just really uh telling and um, i think it's really kind of powerful so it says many of those who suffer from nervousness are persons of fine sensibilities of delicate uh, of delicate regard for honor endowed with a feeling of duty and obligation their nerves have tricked them and misled them. So nervousness, she inter she interchanges. That's a quote by someone else. But in this book, um, nerve nerves is kind of like anxiety. Like the it's a pretty dated book, but it's still very relevant. So just nerves are kind of um, what she talks about as uh, you know 
an anxiousness could be interchanged with nerves. Some of the language is a bit dated, but that's what it means. But I think this quote is really uh, powerful because it's definitely true. Um, those who suffer from anxiety are persons of fine sensibilities, uh, have a deli uh, delicate regard for honor, um, are endowed with a feeling of duty and obligation. And then it says their nerves, so their anxiety has tricked them um, and misled them. And that definitely happened with me, and that's my personality. Um, I have delved into some of this stuff kind of through therapy, through self-reflection and a lot of different things and realized that um, my I'm a very, uh, it sounds kind of silly, but like I'm a very sensitive person. I'm like highly sensitive to things. I, I'm high in empathy and I'm high in, um, I'm going to forget the word here, but it's one of the ones on Jordan Peterson's um, thing. It's when, it's kind of like empathy. Um, I think it means with a C. Shoot, it might come back to me. But it's um, when you uh, when you like are aware of what other people are going through. So, for instance, when you're younger, if you're high and and I'll just call it empathy, but you want to take you you want to um, basically minimize suffering for other people. So you you want to do that. You want to take that on yourself. So, for instance, if your parents are going through something difficult, you'll take on the blame for that and you'll try to like lessen the load of the suffering by taking responsibility for yourself. So sensitive, um, kind of empathetic um, people um, tend to do, tend to behave that kind of way. And a lot of the times, it's, it's kind of sad because kind of like I talked about in the other videos with like the scrupulosity, um, it's people who mean really well who end up uh, kind of screwing themselves for lack of a better phrase. But anyways, um, the chapter one is called The Power Within You. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, um, but I think I might do like a course or companion on this book. Um, I don't know. We'll see see what people think. But um, see what people think of it. But anyways, uh, let's just start off. If you're reading this book because you're having a nervous breakdown or because your nerves are in a quotes bad way, you are the very person for whom it has been written, and I shall therefore talk directly to you as if you were sitting beside me. Um, I shall show you clearly and simply, yet with all the necessary detail, just how a nervous breakdown begins and develops, and how it can be cured. And this is in bold. The advice given here will definitely cure you if you follow it. This will take perseverance and some courage. You may notice that I've not asked for patience. A nervously sick person is rarely patient because sick nerves are usually agitated nerves. That is one reason why it becomes bewildered to them. To wait patiently in a queue can be almost intolerable misery for such a person. However, there is a substitute for patience, and this I shall present to you later. So this is really cool, um, and once again, nerves is switched in with anxiety, but it sounds kind of like gimmicky, like I'm going to show you how to cure yourself kind of thing, but it, it, it really is very true, and I believe that this book, combined with a dietary approach, um, can basically um, heal like most people from, it basically can get most people to a point of like, a pleasant, um, I don't know what the word is, like I'm not where I want to be in life, but I mean, I'm not like panicking or freaking out or like, um, depressed or in a, what she calls a nervous breakdown. And I think nervous breakdown can really just mean, you know, you know, when you're not coping, like you have anxiety, you feel like you're just breaking inside, like you, you're not coping or you're just so depressed. Like these kind of things are, are nervous or are what she's referring to as nervous breakdown. So, um, yeah, she goes on, it will not be difficult for you to read this book. It is about you and your nerves. And for this reason, you will read it with interest. Whereas to read an ordinary book or newspaper may seem an impossibility or you should or should you succeed may leave you more distressed than when you begin. And that's really cool because I think that's very true and I've experienced that with podcasts and uh, well, I did experience that with this book because you're like, hey, can this help me? I'm gonna read it, like this feels like it could help me. But also, I mean, when you're consuming some of these, like I'll use the example of these success stories with these carnivore, with these carnivore stories, right? We just devour these stories about other people, how they succeeded because um, that is what we crave. That's relatable to us. Like I remember when I was like really depressed, the word, when someone even, when I read the word depression in like an article or something, I was like, oh my gosh, like that, it was like a trigger word where I got interested, which is weird because it's like, that's what you're trying to get away from. But that's like, when someone describes the problem accurately that you're in, you're like, holy shit, um, that's it. Like, tell me more and then tell me how I can get better. Um, so that's what she's saying in this book. She's like, I can describe what's going on and then I can show you how to get out of it. And that's like a big deal. And she actually does. Um, so she goes on, um, she says, I use the word cure, and this may surprise you because it implies an illness. You may think of yourself as more bewildered than ill, lost in a maze, trying to find your way back to the person you used to be. I used to really feel like that, and I think a lot of people do. They feel like they're in a maze and they can't get out, or they're on a hamster wheel. It's like anxiety or obsessive thinking or depression or whatever it is, and they can't get out. So it really does feel that way. Um, so you might not think you're ill, but you're like, I'm like, 
I'm like, what is going on? Like you, you feel almost crazy. Um, and then she says, on the other hand, you may be so depressed and exhausted that you may be ready to agree that you are, you may readily agree that you're ill. Whether or not you consider yourself ill more than anything else, you want to be yourself again. That's exactly how you feel, right? You want to be yourself again. You probably